Hi, everybody. Sorry I'm running a few minutes late. I was trying to set up, um, test a different stabilizer real quick. And my bobbin ran out, and yeah, it's, I feel like I'm a hot mess right now. Okay. So I'm going to, I tried to enlarge the file, make it a little bit wider. Hi Holly, hi Antonia, hi Catherine. And I'm so sorry, it's nighttime and I tried some different lighting situations and I'm not having good luck here. So I think I need to find my speed light for my camera and put that behind the tripod and see if that will work. So anyway, I was trying to test with some regular Solvi. No, it failed. It's um, not going to work. So I did have, oh, I have to test. Somebody, I can't remember, is that you, Catherine? Somebody volunteered in the My Punk Board, I think it was good, to test with the wash away. Um, I got to send them the file. So we'll see if that works. Um, I think if any of them, you know, we all know all the My Punk Broidery vinyl is washable. So I think if you have the time, that's always an option if you don't want to fuss with the trimming of the um, stabilizer in the back, which is the most tedious part. You can always just wash it, soak it in the water and wash it away, and then just let the vinyl dry. The only one I would be concerned about doing that too is the flannel backed. Um, probably okay, but I don't know. I'd be a little concerned about the flannel backed vinyls. So I'm going to use some drastic colors here because I don't know where my black bobbins are. I did do have some black bobbins. Um, so I wanted it to stand out a little bit better. It'd probably stand out better if I did it on the tearaway, but I don't want to scare everybody off. The tearaway does work. Um, it's not that much worse than this Salvi is, to be honest. But I think... Um, and maybe we could try it. I could get a cup of water and some Q-tips. I think that if you just rub, the salvy is usually pretty dissolvable. If you rub some hot water with a Q-tip along it, maybe that would work. Okay, I'm making sure I have this tight. Now, this one does work, but the the regular salvy it just started to pull and just disintegrate. That's not It's not meant for this. So, we're gonna go ahead and start the design over. And I sure hope Diana gets on here because <laughs> Diana is testing and she's, or she's been trying it today and she's having some challenges. Um, I'm not sure if she's not seeing the instructions in the PDF well or what. Um, all my little tape here. So I should have set this up upstairs. The lighting is better up there and I could use the big needle machine and have the camera behind me. But this is the living room, and I don't have an overhead light in here. Okay, move this stuff out of the way. It's kind of waiting a few more people. All right, so I'm going to start all over. And I have some red in here, so we'll be able to see that on the bobbin. I apologize. I wanted to have this part done already. So I'm going to... use the honeydew which is kind of a greenish color and then this sharp it's not really turquoise or teal I don't know what color this is I have up there but um, I'm just doing it for high contrast so that you guys can see what exactly is happening Downy and a Q-tip does work on wash away. I don't have downy. So what we're doing is, this is step one, and I think this is where Diana went wrong. I think she did this step on top of her vinyl. So this is just creating the um, cut lines. So everything that's stitching out now is gonna get cut. So there's a little tab, if you wanna use the tab, if you don't want to use the tab, um, where's the samples I have? And I'll show you the difference. The striped one, sorry, I'm a mess over here. The 
it's hard to do these on, on work nights, especially at those who joined me the other day now I had a project that went in and it's a hot mess. So that call should have ended, but it didn't. So I still have to do it at five o'clock. Okay, so this is an example of one that I didn't use the tab because the striped is already good enough. And then this one, oh, that one too. There's the pink one. The pink one I used it on. So the pink one, I had a longer tab, so I used this, the accent on that. So um, it depends on what you want. So if you want to have a longer tab and make your tassel longer, or depending on what purpose it is, you can totally adjust that tower you want. But these, I really liked just accenting on the material, especially on the striped, so I kept the tab really short. So you have flexibility to do that however you want to do it. Okay, let me move these out of the way. My friend's over here messaging me. <laughs> school issues already. <laughs> the third day of school. Okay. So, and this looks a little puckery, but it should be fine because this is exactly what I used the other day during the live. Okay, you see that's, this is all going to get cut. So we're going to put our vinyl on here. And then this is our tab. We're going to stitch our decorative stitching on here. And then we're going to turn this over and we're going to cut it. So if you cannot see your thread on the back, take a marker. I thought I had a marker sitting here. Am I missing early? Yeah, I do have a marker. Take a marker and just draw along and color in your bobbin thread with that marker so you'll know which one you're going to cut. But most of the time, if your tension, this is just a straight stitch, if your tension is okay, you should be able to see enough of the top thread on the bottom to cut at the end of it. Good evening, Barbara. Hi, Rhonda. I don't know if I caught you, Dina and Connie, but hi, and TK. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut a piece, and you're gonna do this at your cutting table so that you're straight, you have nice straight edge to put up at the top. I need, um, this is kind of a solid, so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the decorative band on it. Oh, uh, this is actually the flannel back. Oh, we'll see how this works out. The metallic worked out great, but this one's a little thicker. So, we'll see. We're going to find out. And I did, like I said, I made this, um, the, the tassel a little bit thicker so that it won't take as long to trim the tear away at the end. And the sizes are in the PDF. I'm just winging it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I got a good enough cut here. If you don't have a good enough cut, it's fine. You can overlap it and then just cut on that cut line at the end. So I'm actually going to just do that. That way you guys can see the full shebang of how this should work. I'm going to try and reduce my waist of vinyl, though, and overlap the side here by just a slight amount. Because we don't want to waste all this amazing vinyl. Okay, so what I've done now is I've gone ahead and made sure that I'm overlapping the top by, I don't know, maybe that's half an inch, and the same thing on the sides. And I'm going to tape it down to hold it in place. And I'm going to switch to the blue thread. This one here is the um, My Punk Broidery. I do buy vinyl from a couple other places. Actually, I shouldn't even say a couple. One other place. I buy from um, New Moon. I love Jean. She's a sweetheart. And she gets some interesting stuff that um, Amy doesn't get. Um, and if I'm, like, not concerned about washing it, then I'm, I'm fine. This is Honeydew Metallic Textured. Um, it was on the flash sale a couple weeks ago. So I, I, I had to get the pink lemonade. That's my favorite. So I had to. Got a whole bunch of that. I hope nobody else wanted some and I bought it all. 
But um, so most of my vinyl, I do have some old stuff up there that I bought before I discovered my punk broidery. And um, from like Mick, there's other vendors out there, Mickey World. Um, but I just, I'm kind of a one stop shop now. Okay, so let's see if we can thread this on the first try. But bing, we did. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and stitch out our decorative stitching all across. So there's not very many steps here. Now I put different color stops in because you might want your accent colors to be different um, and that's fine. So that's why I, I did it that way. And you even in fact I left enough space if you want your tab to be a different vinyl you can fussy coat that cut that in there. And I need to like get to the keyboard here. It's like highlighting stuff. I think I'm wearing the same shirt I had on the other day. I did wash it. I really did. Oh, Australia's checking in. Hi, Kathy. It reminds me I have to get off some ornaments to New Zealand. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Rhonda. Um, vendor Rhonda is my punk broidery is my primary go-to vendor. Um, my punk broidery does testing on all their vinyls and they only sell vinyls that are washable. So I don't need to worry about if I want to use this on a hooded towel, I don't need to worry about, okay, is this safe or not? I know it's for my punk broidery. I know it's safe to be washed. So this is actually quite a quick stitch out. I think it says three minutes. The tear away, taking the tear away is the hardest. Whilst doing that, this is the glue I used for my testing, but um, you don't have to use this kind of glue. You wanna use any permanent glue that dries clear and that will work for um, vinyl. This is actually meant for, uh, it's dual bond and it's meant for crystals to put on clothing and stuff so it's totally washable and everything. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, it's telling me to change the color but I want everything the same color. So I'm just gonna head start the next. So now it's stitched out all my tassel stitches. And now it's gonna do the decorative topping and then the little crisscross and then the second topping. Hi Kay, hi Carolyn, hi Jean. Oh, I don't see Diana. Maybe she didn't see the message at what time it started fast enough. Diana, if you came in and I missed you, shoot me a little comment here. So if you're using a multi-needle and you wanna change your colors, you need to make sure you put your stops in or use a reserve stop because this is going to just keep going if you're on a multi-needle. And likewise, the accent band is the same color at the top and the bottom. So if you want that to be the same color, your machine, you might have to just switch it around so you don't have to um, change the thread color again. And that's fine. You can skip the steps and go down there. The accent band. I'm not trimming any of my jumps and I don't know if you guys know Amy does a live on Thursdays and she was um, giving everybody the tip if you use a lighter and quickly a polyester thread it'll eat away those little um, ends. I don't have a, one handy to show you. So this is actually how fast it, it snips out and of course I should have found a paintbrush for the glue I'm still going to be using my pencil. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use the accent pan. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that out. Here's my little glue spreader. And I'm going to try and work on some ch bigger, chunkier ones. I was think, thinking it worked. It's like, you know, that might be kind of cool to have some big chunky ones. Okay, so that's it. We're done stitching. 
So you can see here the lighting, make it a little better. Okay, I think that's good. So you can see here, we're not going to cut these lines. We're going to be end up cutting in between them. This is the top of our tassel, and this is our little accent band. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over and dehoop it, and now here you see. Uh, can you see the colors there? I think if we show it like this, you can. All the red lines are going to be cut. So I'm going to start here. Well, I'm going to cut this little guy out first. And this one I'm going to be careful because we only cut the accent band. And on this, this is not as stable as the tearaway, the paper tearaway. So you have to be a little bit more careful cutting this out. So I'm going to cut around here carefully. And in fact, if you um, just dehooped this, if you went to your cutting table and used the rotary cutter, laid this down and cut along there, that would be the best ideal. That way you know you'll get nice clean cuts. And you'll see, do you see how the blue lines don't go all the way down to the cut line? Because we don't want to cut off that line. This is coming down and doing a jump back up here so that there's no raw edges here. Do you see that? So it doesn't go all the way down there. So I'm going to carefully cut this out and I need to get a bag to put these scraps in. Um, these scraps work really good when you're doing fine lettering on your vinyl. It helps um, keep the lettering from sinking into the vinyl, especially on the thicker vinyls that like to just squash that vinyl right up. And I'm just pulling this vinyl back to make sure that I'm not cutting into my um, into my cutting line. So I got that started, so you can do it from the back if you prefer. So, and I'm leaving my, ooh, I just cut the vinyl there, that's okay. I didn't want to do, be, be um, judicious about your cutting of your vinyl so that you can save as much. So I'm gonna cut from the back. I'm leaving a really wide bander, bander? Border of the cutaway, there you go. Solvy, whatever you want to call this, because I need to trim that out. And so I need to make sure that I have enough area to get to the cut lines. Okay. Because they're they're not attached to the vinyl. They're only attached to the stabilizer. So all right. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut away my tab on the bottom. So you see how I'm talking? This is loose over here. So you need to hold it in place. That's why if you go to your cutting mat and put it down, put your ruler on there and trim that, it's going to be a better result for you. So I'm going to go ahead and cut along this bottom line first and free up my tab. See there? This line is the bottom. We're going to cut across that. And I might have to take my glasses off to do this, but um, let me try. I do have progressives, but I think I need to get them refreshed. And I still need to take my glasses off when I'm doing um, computer, looking at the phone. And for those of you who are new to my group, welcome. Oh, you got it, Diana. Welcome, and I'm a jibber-jabber, so I apologize. If you're watching my YouTube videos, it's the same way. I don't like dead air space, and so I'm a jibber-jabber. So, Diana, what I was just saying, hopefully you saw this. So, we're going to cut along the very bottom line. You don't want to be cutting into your stitches. So, now I'm going to come over here and cut my tab free. And you can actually just kind of wing it on your tab, because you might want your tab to be a little bit wider, but... I'm showing you the right way and I'm just going to cut right along there. So hold the stabilizer in place as you cut along those cut lines. And I don't worry too much about the um, tearing away the solvy. In fact, you could do these accents on paper stabilizer because this tab is going to get folded under. There we go. And so then if you look at the front, it's all ready to go. And you can just cut 
eyeball it from the front if you want and not have to worry about it. So I'm going to tear off as much as this. And it tears off pretty easily, but you do, it is, I'm not going to lie. So what time is it? It's 8.57. I'll start timing it as soon as we get to that point on the big piece. But first I'm going to trim it all up. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going to grab a drink real quick. Hi, Dee Dee, another Australian. What time is it there? It's probably what? Nine o'clock in the morning. Okay. Little free plug to these. If you guys need these bottles, Hydrocell. Oh my gosh, they're so amazing. They're sort of like there's a different brand that's really, really expensive, and these are like a copycat off of that. But I'm not normally a stainless steel person, but there's a straw inside, so I don't have to have touch the stainless steel. It stays cold for a long time. Okay. So I'm going to, um, I don't have something handy to grab all these scraps. Okay, let's put our tab over there so we don't lose it. So I've already cut the bottom. So again, I'm going to come over here and cut the side cut line. Cut both sides right on the cut line. You see that? The lighting a little better? Right on the cut line. So the red is our cut lines. So that's why it's really important that you use a different color of thread for that placement. And now we'll do the top. And again, the top is optional. If you cut the vinyl straight and then just push it and place it on that placement line, you don't need to trim this at the end. Okay, so there. Now if you look in the front, we didn't cut off any of the threads on the tassel. Actually, I didn't get it really great, but that's okay. Again, it's going to be much easier if you just... Um, Put it down on your cutting board and use your rotary cutter to do it. <clears throat> so now what we're going to do, I'm going to switch over to these scissors. They're shorter because I don't want to cut into my line up here. And I'm going to go through it and I'm going to cut every one of these red lines. So this is going to take a little bit of time. Can I zoom in? Let's see. Quit messaging me, people. Let's see. How's that? You guys see what I'm doing now? There's my shirt. You don't want to see my shirt. Move the tripod around a little bit. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to go in here and cut on this red line. And I did widen this. This is going to be probably not quite as pretty of a tassel as the one in the listing because I just wanted to make it faster. So I widened it and made it um, a few less tassels. So try not to cut into your stitching up here. So that's the important part. You don't want to cut into that. But again, we're not cutting on the blue. The blue is our decorative stitching. And you can actually see the stabilizer version of the thread is lifted up. So when you look closely, you can actually see that. So you know that's the right line to cut into. And then the more time you take, the straighter this is going to be. I'm trying to go a little faster. Because this is like watching paint dry. But this is the best way for me to show you how to do it. Um, it's actually kind of, it was hard to capture all the steps in the PDF. Because it's hard to capture this part of it without a video to see what it's doing. So is it making sense now, Diana? 10.20 a.m. I was almost ready. Grayson is in bed. Um... Carol, we are doing another demo on the tassel that we demoed, was it two days ago? Sunday, was it? Oh, one day ago. Wow, that was just yesterday. Yeah, Grayson's in bed. Um, we're trying to get on uh, back on our school schedule, and he's struggling. 
So I had him take a melatonin to help. Um, we try to use that sparingly. I actually end up having to use it quite often, but try to use it very sparingly. Mom. Oh, no, he's not asleep. He just said, Mom. Okay, so then this one, when it's stitched, it actually kind of got a little bit wonky. So watch out for that. You don't want to follow that curve. You want to stay straight. And your machine may not do that, but my genome is not always the best with tension. And that's why it's dead. So if that happens, eyeball it and keep it straight. Just follow the line straight up. And if you had one of those little um, 28 millimeter rotary cutters, you could do this on your cutting mat. Just put a ruler along there to stop the rotary cutter from going there. So the first version I did, I didn't have these cut lines and I wasn't very even in cutting it. So then I added these cut lines. And don't be obsessive about it. I'm actually not doing a great job. <laughs> so I'm not obsessing about it because nobody's gonna take your tassel and look at it and make sure every little tassel is even. So some of them I'm getting right on top of the stitches and some of them I'm getting off a little bit to the side. He must have been watching YouTube. He's supposed to be asleep. And there's the line that I colored over so I could see it better. That's the example if you don't have a different color to use. Okay, last one. And then comes the fun part. And I'm actually going to step away a second and go get um, some water and a Q-tip and let's see if that helps at all. So there we go. You can see what's going to start to look like. One second, I will be right back. I should have thought to do that to begin with. Keep holding, I'm coming. Okay. I don't know if this is gonna work, but we'll try. So let me show you what I do first. To make it easier, when you get up here, you see how you have the um, connecting lines? If you come in from one side and cut that stabilizer right up there, it makes it much, much easier to tear the pieces off. Um, Candy, I don't actually have a lot of tutorials. I have a few um, in the file section, um, and then I have YouTube channel, but I have quite a few lives as well. Yes, Grayson. No, you need to try and go to sleep, buddy. I'm so I'm going to go in here and cut that little loose. Uh, can you see it? I'm going the wrong way. There we go. And not cut into my straights or my stitching, but just cut that loose along each tassel because that's the connection at the top. If you remember when we were following along there, um, the way the placement was, it did that little loop at the top. And I find that that is what helps stop the 
the pulling of it. So if you cut that free on each one, and I told you this part is the tedious part, so it's 9.07, we'll say I already started a minute ago. But if you cut that free, it helps. And some of them I didn't cut very well. If I had cut it well, I would be able to access that from each from the same side, but I didn't. So I'm gonna have to probably come back in from the other direction and cut it as well. So the alternative to doing this, and the reason why, um, those who weren't here Sunday, the reason why I did this is <clears throat> I've been wanting to do a cut file for a long time to make tassels, just because they really add a lot of character to bags. They're really popular in the bag making community. And um, the other day I was watching Lauren Mormino. Her group is so whatever. So if you're interested in doing any kind of sewing bags, join her group. She's wonderful. She's Oh, she's young enough to be my daughter, but she's a cutie pie, and she's got a really great personality, and she has a huge following, and people literally sit there and just watch her sew. Sometimes she's demonstrating, and other times she's just sewing bags. So I've gone ahead and snipped that, so then what you do is you just pull the salvi away. And this salvi doesn't, if you can get that little snip done and grab onto that thread... <clears throat> it actually is not that bad to pull away. So sometimes you'll get one that's kind of a being a little jerk and won't come off for you. But most of them are pull off pretty easily. So this um this was really hard on the micro. So the micro one is the one I would definitely try to do <laughs> the water soak it in water because it the tassels were so little that even when I freed up the the little um stitching here it just it took me I think seven or eight minutes to tear that we're like what at two minutes now so I think Sunday when I did this it took five minutes or six minutes and again don't chunk it into your blue but this actually um the tear away it um wanted to pull on the decorative stitching this salvi doesn't so I'm able to just really kind of pull it. So, and I actually have that as a list in the listing. I have a warning that you have to remove all this at the end. So, um, all right, I've done a few of them. So let's go ahead and grab a Q-tip and let's see if adding this water helps in any way. You guys see? So my thinking is if you rub it along the top here, and dissolve it at the top. The salvia should come off. I'm trying to keep that water way away from my machine. And honestly, you guys tell me I don't actually use this stuff very often. So is this how it's supposed to work? I actually really don't use it, except when I'm doing top. Oh, actually, that came right off. All right, I'm going to go along each top and just rub it a little bit. And it is making it a little wet, but I'm probably using more water than you would. So I'm thinking if you just go along the top, then the rest of them will fall because that's where that thread is at. Huh, this is pretty cool. Hopefully, oh, am I getting out of the camera range? I don't know how to get the comments off my phone and so I can't see if you guys, what you're seeing. I think you can see. Okay, so see how that's actually pulling this up now. Hi, Kat. Um, Diana, yeah, you need to take the stabilizer off else it's going to show underneath. And remember, you have all this, um, the color, the thread from before. So you kind of have to take that stabilizer off. So did that make it easier? I think it did. Uh it's a little sticky up there now though, but I think that's normal with Salvi. So, yeah, it's making it a little easier to pull off now. You still have to pull it off, but again, if you have the time and you're using a regular vinyl without the flannel back, then just throw it in the water and let the water do the job and dry it. Um, the Wash Away is a different product. It's not like the plastic wrap salvi 
see sometimes you'll get one in here where you need to get up here and cut it it doesn't want to come loose so um, that one works a little different it's more like the violin so I don't know how that'll do with washing away but somebody asked volunteered to test it so I'm like okay you can test it and let the team know so but it's not it's not too bad if you want to make a whole bunch of these then just um, do this during your TV watching time and again if it's up here and it doesn't want to come loose then grab the scissors and snip that little bit the washing it off here at the top I can tell it's definitely made it help helped it come off better <clears throat> sorry guys need another, another drink I'm up what five minutes now you know what Linda I wondered about that I just grabbed regular I have a pencil eraser to get the stabilizer started oh really so let's try that I have a pencil eraser right here so what you guys do is just if you have some tips then just shoot them on here oh yeah I see that's a good one and you know what they have that little if you guys seen that tool that's to help get the um, fuzzies off when you're ripping. One end of the seam ripper has a little fuzzy thing on it. I bet that would do a good job too. All right, let me get this finished. Now, if you don't wanna use glue, you can use permanent double stick tape. And honestly, that's probably what I would do most of the time. Um, but my, I've misplaced my quarter inch one and I don't wanna be sitting here using five rows of eighth inch. Did I get it all already? A couple more here. So this is actually coming off a lot easier if you t take the top off like that with the top and get it off. It's coming off much easier. Alright. Is it like watching paint dry yet? Okay, I think I got it all. Now the top, that actually made it, um, I didn't have any trouble getting it to stay glued with just leaving the solvy in when I glued it together the other day. I was worried about that, that the glue would dissolve it, but I didn't. But since I used that water on it, it's actually coming off at the top too. So I'm going to go ahead and finish bringing this off. And then before you start gluing it, you want to go ahead and make sure to trim away any fuzzies that are hanging out. We don't want any extra threads that are going to stick up because it's not going to be easy to do later. Like I have a red one right here. I need to get that out of there. Okay. So go ahead and trim these away. Use that lighter trick that Amy showed us the other day and burn them off. You can do that on any polyester thread. So um, this was polyester, but the pink, uh, it's reddish pink, was actually um, Ro Robeson Anton, and that's actually not polyester. That's, um, I think it's rayon. They do have a polyester. Okay, I'm gonna grab all these little crummies and get them out of the work area. Okay, so here we are. And so then what you have to decide is how, um, okay guys, so the video will still be here. So what you have to decide is how long you want your tab to be and what hardware you're gonna use. Now, you don't have to use a lobster clasp. You can use a D-ring, but you have to decide this because you need to know how wide to make your tape. So we'll just <clears throat> use a D-ring today. Um, and this one I use a tiny little D-ring. Oops. Let me get back out of zoom mode. <laughs> this is messing me up. Oh, I got rid of the comments. I need to get that little Bluetooth remote to work. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to use this, and since I 
did the decorative tab, I want to make sure that um, I show that. And that's one thing I didn't highlight is when you cut your tab, and see I cut mine too short. Um, make sure you cut it as wide. Instead of cutting on the cut lines, make sure you cut it as wide as you need for your hardware. I should have highlighted that. So actually, I'm going to not use this. I'm going to use a split ring instead. And this, I didn't even cut it even. So uh, let me, that'll drive me crazy. I need to even it up. So just make it as wide as you need it. Center the design. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and fold it over. And you could put a piece of ribbon inside here to give it strength. So what I want to do is do a dry run because I might need to trim off a tassel depending on how wide I need this to be. So I just lay it here first, uh, I'll butt it up to the side, and then just roll it. And you want to keep the top straight and pull it in so it's nice and snug. Now, if you have long rivets, you can actually just rivet this, but I don't have a lot any long ones. I only have these... <clears throat> regular length ones that I used in that little pink one the other day and it was really hard to get them in there. But you can buy longer rivets and to be perfectly honest that's exactly what I would do. I would buy long rivets I would roll this up and put a piece of glue on the end to hold it in place and then I would rivet it. So what we're looking for is we don't want to end it on the edge because over time that'll come loose. We want to try and have it end towards the middle and this one's going to do good especially if you're using a rivet. You need it to come over enough for the rivet to get caught. So if you're doing a rivet, you probably need it to overlap three quarters. But this is actually gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it back up and glue it, and that's what it's gonna look like when it's all together. Now look at this one. That's kinda of cute. This one actually kind of, can you see that? It like clumped in and curled inwards. So it's a whole different look. Okay, got some more joiners. I wish Facebook would say who's joining and tell you. All right, here we go using my little <laughs> paintbrush, glue brush, pencil. So the first thing that I wanna do is um, glue this tab together at the bottom. And a lot of the tabs I actually um, cut, folded in half if it was thin. This is actually pretty thick because it has that flannel inside, but I want the tab to stay together. So I glue a little bit on there. And you'll see, where's one of them? This one, I don't know if you can see. I folded over because it was thin. So I made a long strip and then folded it over. And this usually just have to hold it in place for a second or two, but there's so many kinds of glue. You don't have to use this. Um, E6000 comes to mind. That's a really big one. And I'm, I have more trimmies here I should have done, but I'm just going to let it go because I'm tired. You guys are tired. It's Monday. But uh, I, I wasn't expecting, I didn't ex anticipate this to be quite as popular as it is. So I thought I better do another live video because um, just to be safe, make sure everybody understands, make sure I hit any topic or any questions I didn't cover the other day. You're going to use a paintbrush and a proper glue bottle. And don't put too much glue on it. But again, if you're using glue that has the dries clear, then you don't have to worry too much about having that excess glue on there. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to put my tab back in here, and it did not stay glued together. What is going on here? Hopefully it'll be okay. And I'm going to line it up with that top, or however you want to look at it, the bottom uh, accent line, because we don't want the tab to go down underneath in the tassels. And then I'm going to fold it upon itself all the way down, and I'm going to keep it really snug and make sure I'm pulling tight and then I'm following the line here and keeping that straight. So take, this is a t not a time to rush. This is a time to pull, make sure it's taut, 
and keep that line straight. The one I did yesterday, I rushed, and so you could tell on the top. And actually, this is actually getting off kilter. So take the time so that it's all even. And you kind of really have to, am I getting out of the camera here? If you get up over it, instead of trying to do it from an angle like I was just doing, then you can see it and line it up better. Now, if you have one of those cutting machines, you could actually just um, create a cut file and cut the tassel on the cutting machine, roll it up, rivet it, or glue it together. So, I was it Diana or Debbie? Somebody's like, I don't have those alligator clips. You can use any kind of hardware you want. Yes, Barbara, for sure. I mentioned that earlier, maybe when your computer is froze up. Double stick permanent tape for sure. Um, I just don't know where my quarter inch tape is at. And I didn't want to have to fuss with the one eighth inch. But yeah, I would put two, a row of double stick tape on the bottom accent and the top accent. Roll that buddy up and you're done. Because <coughs> that double stick tape, once it's cured, it's pretty dry. Now I know I'm not going to be able to get, um, I don't have a rivet that's going to go through this thick. But... I'm actually going to order some rivets because I'm actually going to start making these to coordinate with my bags so when I do my pictures. So I'm going to order some longer rivets. And I went to Joanne's today and I totally forgot to look. So now remember, if I were to put a rivet in here, that's going to be pretty close call because the overlap is only halfway and I'd want the overlap to come over a little bit more because the rivet might not grab that hole back. So that's what you want to think about is if you're going to use a rivet, then you want it to come almost three quarters of the way over here. Let me see if this light can come over here a little better. Is it better or worse? I didn't move the camera back earlier. That could be part of the issue. Is that better? So... I think you can see there. See how it's not quite three quarters of the way. So if I put a rivet through there, it might not grab it all. So that would be something I'd be concerned with. But you can see how this has already started to take place. So then get a clamp or some glue, a glue, <laughs> a clamp or um, some tape, and tape this down to hold it together until your glue cures. This I don't really need to do this. Mine doesn't isn't having any issues. I love how this one is curling inwards. Can you guys see that? <coughs> so where's the um the stripe flailed outwards all by itself. And it, and it wouldn't probably the stitching is what helped it do that because the stitching is giving some tension into the vinyl. So when I cut it, that stitching was pulling it up. In this case, the stitching was pulling it inwards. It is so cute. Oh my gosh. So now it looks like a little, what do you call that? Um, oh my God. I just had another idea. Look at that. Oh, you guys are going to have to come up with those ideas. Look at that. What happens there? Oh my gosh. Imagine if you overlap the bottom and put a rivet through the bottom. Do you see what I'm seeing? Who's going to try that? That's going to take some kind of, um, patience. To line all those up and put a rivet through them and it'll look like that. <laughs> oh, I get, I get too excited about stuff. It's just too much. I don't need any more ideas. Oops, I missed a piece of stabilizer. Pull that guy off. See, that's why you don't want the stabilizer to stay on there because it's going to be wrong. Now, the other thing you could do is you don't have to be limited to vinyl. Um, this is a great scrap buster, but if you take um, and laminate... A piece of cotton um, with some wonder under or heat and bond light and so it's the same material on both sides that'll help it not fray and then you could use cotton so totally would be really cute I'm gonna put this little split ring through here so you can use whatever hardware you want whatever works for you so many options it's limitless you could keep it really small the and not have much of a tab 
and this I use that tiny little D-ring. Um, this is going to be a lot more dangly, so I could hook this onto a zipper pole. So this fabric, now also remember this one I did make this a little bit wider, just to make the testing better. But that's why it's kind of um, sparse looking. Where is... I really need to organize this table better. I had to hurry up and find a bobbin earlier. That's a problem. So, um, I've already lost the one I did the other day. How did I lose it, guys? Okay, so you'll see it'll look more like the... Um, I literally just had it to show earlier. It'll look more like the silver one in the picture that I lost. The the um, tassels will be... Oh, there it is. Okay. So these, I think, are the same size. Yes, this is the same size. But I made the tassels just a slight wider and took reduced like by five just to make the demonstration faster so but look at the difference of what the vinyl does those look like two different tassels just because of the vinyl the way the vinyl works even though it's exactly slightly wider but otherwise than that it's the same file did both of those okay anybody have any questions how long of a rivet are you going to order do you know um I did find the little ruler here. So this is, let's see, it's about almost just about a half an inch thick. This is the five by seven long. And this is using the, what did I say this was called? Honeydew metallic texture. So that's a half an inch long. This one, this actually is so thin, uh, I might have been able to use, if I kept it wide like this, the rivet would work in this one, the regular standard rivets, which I think are 3 8 inch. But because, see how much more narrow I made this one? It made it much thicker. So the rivet, I got it in, but it was really, really hard. It was really hard to get that rivet in. So this one is, uh, let's see, about three eighths inch thick. I don't, the rivets don't actually tell me how wide they are. These are what I got, they're from TND. Oh, this lighting is terrible. And it doesn't say what kind of, what length they are. So they're just double capped rivets. But this is the small. So they make different sizes. So um, if you get the larger ones, you'll be able to go through this. And then you'll need to be able to punch a hole in it. Um, but my hole punch went through that thickness, no issue. And I think the crop -a dial would go through it as well. So, um, but the lobster claw that I did this little one on, I don't know if it'll hold up long term. It's probably okay. But all I did was cut a hole through it and then fed that tiny little lobster claw on it. That's all I did on this one. This is the micro and it's really small. I don't think I'd want to go any smaller than this, but this one does fit in a four by four. So, um, but yeah, I don't think I could go any smaller than this. It would be really hard. Um, to get the stabilizer out. It was really, really hard. I'm loving how this is doing that little mushroom effect. Oh my gosh. I think tomorrow I might get bored enough that I might actually try and do that and put a rivet in the bottom of it so it stays like this. Somebody beat me to it and do it. Oh. Maybe you have to glue each piece in there. Hot glue would probably hold better, but that would be so cute. You could even slide something in there, a little ring bell or something. Oh, so many ideas. Okay, guys. Well, it is 930, so we've been at this for an hour. Um, I hope that answered all the questions for y'all. Um, 
other than tearing out the stabilizer, it's actually a really quick little project. And especially these little ones, they're a great scrap ruster. You don't need a lot of material for them. And um, hope you like them. It's Look at the difference you get when you use a contrasting color. It adds a lot of character to it. So you have that flexibility of um, bringing some character to it. If you want it to look more um, neutral and just look like a traditional tassel, I don't know where the other one went. The other one I matched the color up and it didn't show up as much and just looks like a tassel. So it really depends on the look you want to go for. So use contrasting color if you want it to really stand out and give that extra look, especially in the top, that decorative tab, or use uh, a color that's gonna meld into it. Um, just the tassel part is got to go backwards because my rulers broke here so just the tassels are let's see there's on the five by seven long it's just about one two three inches and then including the top it's three and a half this is the mini and just the tassels is one and a half. And the whole thing is two. Where'd the micro just go? <clears throat> the micro, just the tassels are one and a quarter. And the entire thing is about one and three quarters. Just not including the tab at the top. Not including the tab at the top. And the other one's down here in the floor. So this is the Oh no, is this a mini? Nope, that's a mini. How did I lose the standard? I lost the standard size. Okay. Um but you can look in um the file should show. I'll look it up in the file. How did I lose those? I'm losing my mind. You tell it's getting late here. Yeah, I don't know what I did with the standard. I had them all sitting here before we started so that I could answer any questions. And of course I've lost it. I'm a hot mess. It is a Monday in my defense. Okay, um, I will look it up and I'll post it in the comments I believe it's 175, 1.75 on the regular ones. Over by the light. Oh, thank you. Who said that? <laughs> you guys can see what I can't see. <laughs> okay. All right. So these are the regulars. Yes. Thank you. Who is that? That said over by the light. Linda. <laughs> All right. So the regular is two inches on the tassels and one two and three quarters including the top I really should measure all these and write that down and put it in the Etsy listing but look how cute all these are ah uh, so I'm tasseled out and when you have these really little ones they're not going to be doing a lot of weight you can get away with doing the a single um a single line or single layer of vinyl <clears throat> but if you're going to use these i doubled these over because this vinyl is really thin both of these are really thin and it's going to take a lot of weight so this actually you could actually put this on your key ring i've seen people carrying tassels i personally wouldn't because it, they're going to get bunched up because i put my keys in my uh, my pocket but if you don't, if you're somebody who hangs your keys on your wrist strap, and a lot of times people are using these just for decoration on their handbags. So, and it's a cute little decoration. If you wanted to be really clever, you could take the mini, 
cut it out and lay it over on top of the regular and roll it up together and that'd be kind of cute it'd be really thick but it'd be cute so lots of lots of possibilities and I hear my son is still in here so I better get off here and get him to sleep everybody have a good evening I'm gonna go ahead and save this and if I can remember I'm gonna put it I think I figured out how to add things to the units and it makes it much easier to find the videos you just go to units and then um, find the videos I'm really in love with these tiny little ones with the zipper poles so I'm I just worry that the little hole is not gonna hold up over time so I'm gonna think about that but as a little zipper pole this is awesome but I'm gonna work on that and think of an idea to make that stronger on how we can make it a little bit stronger so that it doesn't tear okay everybody have a good night um, if you have any questions, shoot us a message on Facebook or post in the group. Thanks, everyone.